Hello, this is Excel for your parents. My name's Elizabeth, and today we're going to be looking at array functions. Specifically, we're going to check out the unique function and the filter function. We're going to look at how easy and dynamic these functions are to use, how you can quickly set up charts and graphs, how we can use them and embed them in more native functions, and also how we can set up dynamic data sets for charts and tables that aren't supported by pivot charts. So if you'd like to follow along, download the Excel practice document in the link and meet me over at the computer. Okay, now that we're back on the spreadsheet, let's look at our data set. This is data set from a bike shop. It has date, product size, and sales amount. And we're gonna use this as an example. We're gonna start off with our very first array function, unique, and I don't even need to tell you what to do. I'll just show you what it does. So I'm gonna type in equals unique. I'm gonna scroll down three, press the tab button, and I'm gonna select my array. Right now, I wanna know all of the unique products. So basically, it's, it's the product name without repeating. So I'm gonna select my data, close my parentheses, press enter, and it gives me a comprehensive list of all of my products that are listed in this table without any repeats. So this can be super, super helpful. Say if I wanna set up some really quick metrics, so I'm gonna call this product the median price, and we wanna know the average price. Price of these items, we can easily just format our data table. Now, if you're looking at this, let's talk about the next use for, a, for these functions. We can embed them inside of other functions. So. If you were doing an average, you can, you know, most of you know, you can do an average ifs function where it goes like this, you go average, I wanna average the sales amount given my criteria range is product, comma, and my criteria is road bike. But Excel doesn't natively have this function for median. So we can actually use an array function by feeding it exactly the data we want and then asking the median of that data set. So let's, let's use the filter function and I'm gonna let it spill down at first so that you can see what's going on here. I'm gonna actually spill it over here. So I'm gonna ask it to filter all of the sales amount for the road bikes. So I'm gonna equals filter. And the array I want to return is gonna be the sales data. I'm gonna put a comma and the product, I'm gonna highlight product. This one's a little bit different than a lot of other Excel setups. We're not gonna put a comma. We're actually just gonna go equals right after we selected that column. And then we're going to select our criteria, close your parentheses, press enter. And now what we have is a filtered range of all of the sales amount for road bike. But we want it to just to show up in one cell as a median. The cool part is, is we can take this function that we just created, this filter function, and we can place it inside of a traditional Excel function. So we go equals median, and I'm going to paste that function we just created in there and close it. And now you're gonna get one value returned and you can drag this down and we can see this across all the different product lines. So really cool way that you can create your own if or ifs functions using the median uh, when Excel doesn't natively have that, like that average ifs, they don't have a median ifs. So you can use this for a bunch of different things. So uh, let's talk about a little bit more detail of, hey, if we wanna do a little bit more advanced here, we wanna, we wanna get a little crazier with our unique function. What if I want the unique values of size and product? So if a road bike has small and medium, I would want bike, road bike, small and medium to show up. And if they didn't have large, I wouldn't want large to show up. So we can simply do this by selecting two columns so we can do product and size and close it. As you can see, it'll spill into two separate arrays here. So now I have a combination of unique products and sizes. So to expand on this with our traditional average if function, we would just add another condition, right? We would add our size, we would go comma, and we would add our size criteria and close, and that would give us our average function. But what about this median function that we created? If we want to use this filter function and filter be more specific and add more criteria, we can totally do that. So how you do that is you're gonna come into your criteria here. So let's, um, let's do it off to the side first. We're gonna create a filtered value that not only filters road bikes, but filters on size road bikes when it's a size small. We're gonna go equals filter. We're gonna select our array, comma, 
we're going to select product again. We're going to go equals road bike. And now we're going to put both, we're going to put this column and the criteria in parentheses. We're going to do a, a times, open up parentheses again, and now we're going to select our size equals small, close your parentheses, close your large parentheses, and press enter. Now, anytime you do this, you can put as many criteria as you want in here. You just have to put them in parentheses and have an asterisk between them here. So no comma, just put an asterisk between them. Now we filter down by two sizes. So we can just take this function that we created and drop it into our median function to get a more specific and, and use multiple criteria. Let's try that. So equals median. And I'm going to paste that filter function we did where it's filtered by the amount. And our criteria is going to be product equals road bike. Also, when size equals small. And we're going to close that parentheses, press enter. And boom, we have a filtered range super easily. And we just created a super easy chart where this would have taken a little bit more time with other methods. So let's see also what we can do if we want to set up a chart or a graph that doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily supported in other forms of Excel like pivot, pivot charts. So I think of a box and whisker plot. I think of that all the time. I want to see all of my products price point on a box and whisker plot so I can kind of understand my different product price points. So let's use the unique function to get a transposed array over here. So I'm going to do equals unique and we're just going to select the product name again, close your parentheses, but I want it to go horizontally, not vertically. Super easy, I stick transpose in front of my unique function, I close it, press enter, and as you can see, my array is now going um, across my columns. Now let's stick filter functions in below each of these arrays so we can set our data up for a box and whisker plot. So this one equals filter. We're going to filter we want the sales data, comma, and we want it when the product equals M3, close data. So now this, this isn't going to work if we drag it over right now because the, the, table name are, the table names are not locked. So I'm going to quickly go in here and lock the table names. If you're for not familiar with locking table names, it's very similar to having a cell reference A1 and you put the dollar signs between the A and the 1 and you've just locked it. But to do it, to lock a cell reference on a table, we're going to go in here. As you can see, this table is named bike sales and it's selecting the entire column. How to lock a table is we're going to uh, put another bracket. I'm going to put a colon, open bracket, and just put the exact same column name there and close double brackets. We've just locked that now. I got to do the same thing with product here. So open, I do a, I put a semi, I put a colon, open your bracket, and we do product and close two brackets and press enter. So now at this point, what we're doing is we're going to, it's going to all stay. Uh, it's it's going to stay referencing the right columns, but it's also going to come up here and grab the right product name. And as you can see, we didn't actually necessarily have to lock this this P that that two on the P right there because it's only referring to even though it spills down, it's going to use this top as to where to grab the reference the, the top cell on each. So now, if the cool part about this is if I just copied it, filtered and copied and pasted all my data, this data would, if something changed on this data set, then this wouldn't change. I'd have to go recopy it. But as you can see, if we change a number in this data set, it's gonna change over here dynamically. So let's highlight all of this and go to insert. Let's put a box and whisker plot in here. So I'm gonna go on down, box and whisker, as you know, most of you know, you cannot use this in a pivot chart. Pivot charts don't support some chart types. So it can be really helpful to have resources like this to be able to use your, you know, use your data dynamically and be able to refresh easily. So I'm going to put this down here, put it right there. So our chart title, this would be bike, bike sale amounts. And I would come in here and I'd probably clean up this chart a little bit. 
by putting a legend so you can see all of the different bike sale amounts. And this over here, I would probably put some, some access titles. This one, we don't need this access right here, so I can delete that. But this access would be sale price. So you can see the different price ranges of the different bike types very easily. And this is dynamic, easy to change. I hope you enjoyed going over a few quick ways to use array functions, specifically unique and filter, and I hope you find a way to incorporate them. If you like my videos, please subscribe for more. Thanks.